This is a video showing you how to properly install your brass hit insert into your knock-on arrows. The first thing that you're going to want to do is determine what length arrow you need for your bow. And at that point, you're going to want to make sure you cut this arrow using a certified arrow saw. If you don't use a proper saw, you're running the risk of having an arrow that could possibly injure you. So make sure you use a proper arrow saw. Once you've cut your arrow to the length that you want, then from there you're going to go ahead and remove the accessories from the small pouch that you get with the arrow shafts. Inside that you're going to have your brass inserts, a small sanding stone, a green plunger, as well as the epoxy that's going to be used for your installation. Now once you've cut all your arrows, you're going to start out by taking a Q-tip and some alcohol and properly cleaning the inside of that arrow shaft completely. Once you've cleaned every shaft, go ahead and set them down and let them dry for about five minutes. From there, you're going to take the small pouch that your accessories came in and go ahead and flip that over so that the directions, which can show you this exact process, is facing up at you so that you can actually reference this as you go. The epoxy that comes with these aero shafts is a slow cure epoxy that takes about 24 hours to fully cure. So it's going to be important that you leave your arrows completely flat during the curing time. If you have fletched arrows or if you lay your arrows on an angle, the inserts can slowly slide further out of the shaft, which is going to be a major problem. So be sure to lay them flat. In most cases, I actually like to take my arrow shafts, cut them, clean the ends, remove my knocks, install my points, lay them flat, lay it, let them cure, and then I'll go ahead and either reinstall my knocks after the glue is fully cured, or install my lighted knocks and then go ahead through my fletching process. If you want to know how to properly fletch the arrows, just go to the Knock on Archer YouTube channel and search for John Dudley, how to properly fletch arrows. And you'll be able to find several different videos that I've done showing you exactly how to do that. Now, one thing that I'll say is I know that some people do choose to use a faster cure epoxy, like a five minute epoxy. I just want to make you aware that the faster your epoxy dries, the more brittle it will become over time. So if it has a lot of continual impact, it could weaken a fast cure epoxy and you could end up pulling your points or your broadheads out somewhere down the road. So keep that in mind. Now with this epoxy, it's easy to use. There's two parts, one on each side. So fold this little green pouch in half, just like this. Reference the small dotted line in the corner and go ahead and cut that off with a scissor. Then you're gonna fully empty this pouch and there's gonna be two different colors, a clear as well as a yellow. When you mix these together properly, it's going to turn into a cloudy or a milky color in consistency, and that's what you're looking for. Make sure you mix it well and mix it completely. Now the next thing that you need to determine is what weight insert are you going to use? Do you want the 75 grain, which is the full length, how it will come out of the package, or do you want to drop down to a 50 grain insert? If you want to drop down to the 50s, you'll notice that the only difference is the small end that's right after the neck down point on the insert. So if you want to break that off to 50 grains, take a pair of pliers and grab the small end and align the pliers flush with where it's indented down into that insert. Hold the pliers tight and take your finger on the large end and just slightly bend it and it'll break off to a 50 grain point. One of the reasons I like to remove the knock off the arrows before I glue my inserts in 
is simply because the hit insert is plunged internally into the shaft. So if you end up having too much air pressure or if you plunge it in too fast and there's too much air pressure, it could slowly start to push its way slightly out. And if you don't do it correctly, you're gonna end up having an alignment issue with your broadheads or your field points. So this is just something that I've learned over the years can really be helpful in making sure the insert depth is correct. Now, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your epoxy is that milky consistency, like I talked about, which I'll go ahead and mix this now. And the nice thing about the epoxy that comes with these is that you're not rushed in how quick you have to do this process. Because it is a slow cure glue or a slow cure epoxy, you do have some time. One thing you wanna be careful of is not using too much of this epoxy as you're installing these. It doesn't take too much. Ideally, what you're looking for is just enough so that as you insert that in and turning as you go, once you get close to the end, there's only a minimal amount that you'll actually have to remove with a towel in order to plunge it in. Okay, so if you had as much as I showed you there, way too much. So the ideally what you're looking for is a small amount on that bottom third, bottom quarter, bottom third, and you're gonna turn as you insert. Now one thing I wanna make you aware of is make sure the threaded end of the insert is facing out of the shaft because obviously that's what your broadhead or your field points screw into. So don't put them into the shaft or you're never gonna be able to get an arrow to twist and lock down. The other thing is the plunger that comes with this kit is made so that the small nipple on the end will actually insert into the threaded part of your brass hit. And then that allows you to press that hit into the arrow shaft and continue to go until the arrow shaft actually bottoms out on the tool. You don't wanna have any gap before you start to remove. So make sure you slowly go all the way down until it's perfectly flush, and then you're gonna slowly turn and remove that out. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you didn't plunge or suction that insert towards the end because again, that insert needs to be inset the depth of that plunger tool. So I'm gonna just show you here quickly how this would work. I'm gonna apply a small amount of epoxy on that bottom part of the insert. I'm then going to insert that and slowly turn as I'm going. I'll take what is left as an excess and either wipe it with a towel or with a rag. I'm gonna insert that all the way in until we're completely flush. I'm then gonna turn and remove the tool. I'm gonna then wipe off with a towel any type of excess on the end or on the outside of the shaft. And then you're gonna to want to lay that arrow perfectly flat. Again, I personally choose to remove the knocks and let this process happen and fully dry and cure before I put my knocks back in. If you are replacing your knocks with a lighted knock, I highly recommend anytime you replace knocks of any kind to actually put a little bit of string wax on the bottom corner of that knock so that it really helps as you insert it and get it properly indexed according to what you want. From there, after this is dried, you're gonna then use your small sanding tool. And this is used for not only perfectly squaring the end of the arrow shaft, but it also cleans off any uh, residue epoxy that's there and it chamfers that shaft just a little bit to help with your broadheads and your field points. 
The other thing is if you decide that you want to have your broadheads perfectly indexed with your fletchings, this tool allows you to slowly sand or remove part of the shaft off the bottom so that your alignment is easily done. So if you need to tighten your broadhead and go just a little bit more so that the blade is aligned with your fletching, then simply go back to this stone and sand it just a little bit more and tighten it up until you have perfect indexing. Now, if by any chance any of this is intimidating to you or you don't have the confidence in doing it properly yourself, then just head to your local dealer or ask someone that you know that's done this before to help you out. It's an easy process as long as you follow these steps that I've learned over the years work each and every time. And I hope from there, you're ready to move on to the next step, which is fletching your arrows, which again, you can find a video on that on the Knock on Archer YouTube channel.